loves and welcome to Let's Talk the Podcast. It is your favorite podcaster, Chakisha Sims. And if this is your first time tuning in, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode and I hope that you come back. And if you are a returning listener, you already know it is mad love here. I'm so excited to chop it up with you guys today. So if you want to hear what I am talking about in this week's episode, keep listening. Hello loves and welcome back to Let's Talk. So today is the first official episode of I guess you would say season two, or maybe we just say season one. But um, today is, it's a lot today. Um, I actually already recorded an episode for today. But then after I talked to my mom, I was just like, maybe I should talk about something else. And I decided to go look at my podcast notes where I keep thoughts or topics that God gives me, whether it's after I've watched a sermon or talked to someone. And I want to talk about arresting our thoughts. I really feel like it is necessary and it kind of almost ties into what I was recording, but Like I said in my welcome video, this is unscripted. There's going to be topics, um, but I really, really want this to be a place where I'm speaking from my heart um, and not so much, you know, orchestrated and, you know, so perfect and segments and all of those things because in today's society, in our lives, our real lives, we don't need a script in regards to our feelings per se. Um, You know, so often people are telling us what to think, what to feel, and you end up having all of these thoughts that are being deposited into you that your thoughts are out of control. And so that's why, you know, the spirit of God always leads me to where I need to be led when I make sure that I focus on him. And today we're talking about arresting our thoughts. All right. So before we get into the meat and potatoes, let's start with the actual scripture in which Every episode may start off different, but because we're talking about our thoughts and I believe that everything should be spirit led, I want to read this scripture and I'm reading out of the book of Romans chapter 12, verse two. And the version I'm reading is the passion translation. So it reads as follows. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. How beautiful does that sound? Like, I feel emotional just reading that. Because, again, like I said at the beginning, so often we are living our lives moving day to day based on things and culture that has been placed before us, whether we are taking it in with our eyes, taking it in with our ears, or our spirit, whatever the case may be, we take all of these things And things become thoughts. And thoughts can become dangerous if we do not arrest them. And so 
we all know what arresting means. When you do something bad and you commit a crime, you get arrested and you get charged, found guilty or innocent, whatever the case may be. But in the process of being arrested, you're being detained so you won't do that thing again. And that's what we need to start doing with our thoughts. It's so easy to be faced with challenging situations, whether it be in your relationships, your career, your image, or just, hey, being a content creator. You get so wrapped up in trying to do what's right And then people are telling you doing it the wrong way or you see somebody do it one way and you're thinking, oh, I should do it this way, too. You know, and then you kind of get caught up in the negative spirit of comparison and comparison is another one of those. It's necessary, but it can be an unnecessary evil as well, because if you don't know how to compare yourself in a positive light towards something and find your value in the comparison, it can cause you to think things like, I'm not good enough or my business is not going to grow as much as that person's business or my marriage is never going to look this way because I watch how they do it on social media and we're supposed to be doing this and doing that. And then you're Thoughts become things and the things become crippling and the crippling things then cause you to lose everything that you've worked so hard for. And so I want to just talk to you just for a little bit about how to arrest your thoughts. I know it's easier than, you know, it's easier said, but with anything that you do, On a consistent basis, it will become second nature. You know, some of the things that I do now, I thought I would never be able to do it, but I kept trying and I kept trying and I failed, but I kept trying. I kept trying to talk positive confirmations and affirmations, and then I would say doubtful things, but I kept trying. I kept trying. I might have been a habitual offender. I may have. Had to arrest my thoughts many a times, but I made sure that I constantly tried to guard my thoughts by watching the things that I said, watching who I allowed to speak over my life, watching who prayed over me, and most of all, watching what I watch, okay? (laughs) So a few things that... I want to share with you about arresting your thoughts. Start off small. Start off how it works for you. What works for me may not work for you, but what I'm sharing is an example for you to go on so you can figure out what works best for you. One of the things that I had to work on so hard was finding peace in my life and peace is one of the hardest things to really work on but that was something that I needed for myself because I never was at peace with who I was as a woman I always felt like you know I had to do this and do that to make the man like me or I had to be that ride or die friend to make sure that my friends will always rock with me or I had to make sure that I was always that person that wanted to be the PR girl to promote everybody just so people could see my value but I had to learn how to find peace with who I was and where I was even if that relationship didn't work even if that friend you know didn't want to rock with me today or even if that business person did not see my value and how I did that I just constantly started speaking over myself I started with when that first piece of doubt would hit me I would always say 
well, let me give you a clear vision of how it started. I might was, you know, doing a YouTube video and I would have 20 views and then someone else that did pretty much exactly the same YouTube video would get a thousand views. And I would say, man, I'm not good enough. Like my stuff is like theirs, but they just are better than me. Like they're just doing so much better. They're getting more views. I'm not doing this right. How can I be good at this? Should I keep doing this? I should stop because nobody's watching my videos. Nobody's looking at what I'm doing. I'm just wasting my time. I'm not good at this. And those thoughts started to cripple me. And those thoughts, and I even talked about it in my welcome back vlog. Those thoughts would cause me to be inconsistent. Those thoughts would cause me to stop doing what I was doing because I didn't find any value in myself in what I was doing because I was looking at the value of someone else's and because I was looking at someone else's value it caused me to be in a place of unrest I was constantly thinking about how can I be better how can I get to this person's level and the matter of it all is their level is not my level we all get to different levels at different times. And on the times that we're on the same level, my level just may look different from yours and vice versa. So I started, I had to start looking at the value in what I was doing for those 20, 60 viewers and stop trying to worry about their thousand viewers. And I started to say, you know what, Keisha? You are doing good. You are putting in the time. You are putting in the work. And there are 20 people that like it. You know, I had to start speaking positivity into what I was doing. I had to stop thinking about what other people were doing and think about what I was doing and how... What I was doing was positively affecting those 20 people that were viewing my YouTube videos. And then I started to put that in practice with everything else in my life. Now, don't get it twisted. Sometimes I have my moment, moments. We're all human. Where I'm like, why am I going through this? And then when I make that declaration... I become more mindful of the thoughts that follows because that's how it all starts. When you pose that question, why X, Y, and Z, that's when the thoughts that you put into your mind and your spirit starts to come to fruition. So that's why you have to put your thoughts under arrest. Read them thoughts, your rights. As soon as you have a thought of doubt, read them Miranda rights to them doubts. Be like, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. It's nothing that I cannot do. I will not allow this setback. I will not allow this low viewing uh, views on my video to keep me from doing what it is that I know that I'm supposed to do. You know, because one thing about getting under arrest, you don't always have to go to jail. You know, you put the handcuffs on. You put the person in the back of the car and you ask them, you know, why did you do this? Why did you make the decision to make this negative decision? And you talk it out. And as you talk it out, you start to realize that that was a bad decision. That was a bad thought. As soon as you find yourself saying that I will never be a mother, put that thought under arrest because how you may think and how I might have thought I was going to be a mother was not the plan. And sometimes we do things to prevent us from 
obtaining what it is that we desire, but God will make it happen if it's his will. And what do I mean by that? This is a little sidebar. So most people that have followed my story, that's heard me talk, you know, I am... Um, I'm unable to naturally have children. Now, I'm about to be 49. I don't want to birth nobody's babies. However, when I was in this season where I could, because of the choices that I made, things happened to my body that put me in a position where I'm unable to naturally have children. And so with that, I started speaking the most disrespectful thoughts to myself that it made me feel less than. I would say, you know, oh, because I was stupid and I didn't use my own thoughts. Now I'm in the situation. Nobody's going to ever love me because I can't have a child. You know, nobody's going to ever want to marry me because they're going to want to have a baby. I'm going to be alone. If I get sick, who's going to take care of me? Like all of these thoughts that were crippling me, all of these thoughts. But when I started speaking life over to myself, over myself, and when I started to grieve the process that I may never naturally have children and started seeking God's word for my life and started speaking the word of God to my thoughts, God gave me a family. God gave me children. Now I'm about to be a grandmother. Yeah, I might not have birthed those children. But one thing about it is. God is going to always give you. What he has will for your life. He has always desired me to be a mother. But because of my choices and because of the things that I. The thoughts that I allowed to become things took away my physical ability to do it, God will never take away his will. You just have to open yourself up. And if I would have never started speaking things over my life and learning how to heal and learning to stop saying that because I can't do this, nobody will marry me. Because I learned how to stop doing that, somebody married me that had children that respect me as a mother figure you get what i'm saying and so if i would not have arrested my thoughts and started speaking life over myself i may not have ever fulfilled the will that god had for my life and that is possible it is so many people on this earth whose will will never be fulfilled because they don't know how to arrest their thoughts and speak life This is exactly what me and my mom was just talking about. I was just, you know, in my mother, I love her to death. My mom has had cancer four times and God has delivered her. And I had to remind my mom, I'm like, look, I'm not trying to browbeat you or nothing like that. But God gave you life four times. For a reason. Because he wants you to to speak the goodness of him over your life. Regardless of whatever it is that you're going through. To know that God saw so much in you to keep you here another day. It's because it's something that you're not speaking over yourself. That he wants you to. See God will make you repeat the test. And that's the thing. You got to know the difference between a test and temptation. You know, and it's like with Job, you know, God said, you know, you can try to do these things, but you can't kill them. And the God and, you know, one thing about it is the enemy will come through and steal, kill and destroy. And if he can't kill you, he will try to steal you from you and he gonna try to destroy you. And the only way to keep him from doing those things is by arresting your thoughts. As soon as you start to think things that are not God's will over your life, the enemy will try to come in like the slithering, slimy, sneaky snake that he is. 
he will try to come through like that lion that wants to devour the prey that's weak and docile. Because he knows that as long as your thoughts are out of control and reckless and they're not aligned with what God has for you, he got a chance to come in and take all of that away. And it's not because the devil got the power, because he has no power, but he's a manipulator. And he knows how to manipulate our thoughts by using things like doubt, fear, depression, anxiety. And yes, I know some people have mental health issues and some of those things they can't control on their own. But as long as they remember to take their medicine and do those things, that's arresting your thoughts too. Because what the enemy will try to do is like, oh, you don't need that medicine. That medicine ain't right for you. You Get into your thoughts and then you're not doing the things that you need so you can operate the way you need to operate. And one thing about it is when you let your thoughts get out of control... Not only can it cause your life to go in a downward spiral, it can cause you to be sick, it can cause you to lose your hair. And ladies, y'all know we ain't trying to lose these edges. It's hard enough to hold on to them as it is. So don't let them thoughts take them edges, okay? (laughs) I'm just saying. I'm a hairstylist and I be having people, they be stressed. I'm like, look. You keep stressing, you're going to be bald-headed and them edges going to be gone. And they be like, oh, I got to stop. Sometimes you got to motivate people to arrest their thoughts. <laughs> but real talk, all all jokes aside, you know, it's it's real. And so the power of in life is in your tongue. If you speak life to things, when you're speaking it, you start to think it. As you think it, it becomes things. If you speak death, those Killer thoughts will go to your mind and then it becomes things. You know, it's a cycle. You hear stuff, you speak stuff, you see stuff, and it gets into your mind. And once it gets into your mind, then it starts getting into your spirit. Once it gets into your spirit, it's taking over your spirit and your flesh. And then you're just out of control. And again, I go back to the scripture in the Passion Translation. Stop imitating The ideals and opinions of the culture around you. How do you do that? By arresting your thoughts. As soon as you see something or hear somebody's opinion that is opposite to what God's will is for your life, put them handcuffs on those thoughts and start doing an inward transformation. That's the next line. It says, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit and a total reformation of how you think. I can just mic drop it right there. A total reformation of how you think. We got to start reform. Look, y'all, look, y'all be talking about what what they be saying. Um, I'm digressing, but, you know, track with me right here. You know, they be talking about uh, police reform. Police arrest you, right? Look, reform your thoughts before, you know what I'm saying? Before they get out of control. Then you don't have to be arrested. (laughs) But no, but seriously, if I have not said anything today, That has encouraged you, inspired you, and motivated you. I've done it for myself because I legit sat here and recorded a whole podcast in my closet. And that was was the name of the, um, uh, the episode, In My Closet. But after I recorded, I talked to my mom, and I... Started thinking and listening to the Holy Spirit. And I allowed him to 
redirect what it is that I had to do. And see, one thing about it is the Holy Spirit, He it will guide you to where you need to be. You, the goal is to get to a place where you don't even have to arrest your thoughts. Where you're automatically like, you know what, this ain't what, this ain't the will for my life. This ain't the will for my life. Let me do this. Let me do that. Like you automatically making moves, not excuses. You automatically, yeah, I'm snapping my fingers because, listen, you moving and you shaking. You're a reformed citizen. Reformation. Reform how you think so you don't have to add that extra step of constantly arresting your thoughts. Make it an everyday practice. Speak life, not death. If you got a friend that be like, girl, he ain't no good. You need to leave him. Take that opinion. Send it back to the pits of hell. Sit with God the Father and ask him to transform your thoughts. Ask him to show you the will for that relationship. Do I need to leave this person? Am I contributing to why he ain't nothing or she ain't nothing? Your thoughts, once you put your thoughts under arrest, then the line of questioning happens. Why was you here? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Like for nothing else, put on your mirror when you wake up. Today, I need to arrest my thoughts. I need to put my thoughts under arrest. Read them its rights and start my line of questioning. Why am I acting like a fool today? Why am I over here snapping on people that ain't do nothing to me? Why am I speaking death over my life when the word of God says that I came to give you life, life more abundantly? Start interrogating those negative thoughts when they happen. Have some impulse control. As soon as you start feeling that way, start interrogating it. I'm going to give you one more example, then I'm going to end it. Last month or month before last, something happened, and I got so angry. When I say I got angry, I got so angry, I couldn't think straight. I was trying to find music that will fuel my anger. I was trying to let my thoughts get out of control. I wanted that anger to keep going. So I was like thinking of negative things that will keep going and keep going and keep it going. But because of the will of God over my life, my thoughts got put under arrest. And I was like, let me start listening to some worship music. I need to get control of these feelings. I need to. To calm down because the way I was feeling, I was feeling, it was making me sick. That's how angry I was. I ain't going to tell y'all why I was angry, but (laughs) some stuff ain't for everybody. But I was so angry and I felt myself, my head was hurting. I was getting sick and like, I was like, oh, it's time to put these feelings and thoughts to rest. I was like, God, I put on some worship music, started listening. I started crying. My thoughts started to, you know, calm down. And I started to think about what is it that I could have done differently to keep me from having those angry thoughts. You know, some some people, doesn't it doesn't happen that fast for them. But the more and more that you practice it, the more you will find ways to bring it down. And, you know, we, are, we live in a world where we're going to always be affected by people's opinions and the culture, the trends, what we see on social media. And I'm a firm believer. People, you know, say guard your eye gates, your ear gates. I believe in that. But I also believe that I shouldn't have to, not unless I want to, let me just put that way, but I shouldn't have to detox and delete apps and stop looking at the news and stop looking at social media because I don't have control of my own thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I should be able to see things, hear things, 
live amongst people that may not operate the same way that I do. And I should be able to check my thoughts at the door and be like, you know what, just because she acting a fool, I ain't going to act a fool. Or just because I see them on social media doing things to their bodies, don't mean I'm going to do it. Just because I see this person out on the street harassing that person on the street, I ain't going to do it. Because I'm going to be constantly transforming my mind, rethinking what it is that God has for my life. So today I hope that this re-record of today's episode has not only blessed you, but it has also got you thinking about getting them thoughts under control. You know what I'm saying? Get them zip ties, them handcuffs, them spiritual zip ties. Um, I was watching a sermon, and that's where I got inspired from this. He was saying, like, you got to walk around with them spiritual handcuffs and arrest them thoughts. Like, we have to do that on a daily basis because there's so much drama in the LBC. I'm just joking. <laughs> but no, real talk, it's so much drama that... It's easy to be a part of that drama. And if you don't get hold of them thoughts quick, fast, in a hurry, you're going to go down this cycle of constantly making bad decisions. And then you're going to have to start all over again. Nobody wants to have to start all over again. Especially when you could have done the right thing by snatching the edges of them thoughts and saying, wait a minute come back okay (laughs) but as you listen to this podcast in any future podcast just know that you do not have to do life alone and that there are people like myself out there that will not only pray for you but they will pray with you And that's a big difference because people always, especially, you know, you see them social media posts. I don't pray for you. And that'd be the prayer. I'm going to pray for you. Now I'm going to pray with you. You want to pray? Let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. Like they're willing to just stop what they're doing and pray with you. Because when two or more gather in his name. God is in the pre- is he's the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, all of it, the Trinity, they're there. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm, we're movements by our, ourselves, but we're a force when we are together. And when we are thinking and praying God's will over our lives. So before I go, I want to pray with you all. And Before I start my prayer, again, I want to thank you all for coming back and tuning in to another episode of Let's Talk the Podcast. I'm so glad to be back, and I pray that this season, season two, will not only bless your life, but it will bless my life too, because as I'm talking, I'm talking to myself as well. So, Father God, I thank you right now for all the people under the sound of my voice. I pray that it was something that was said that has encouraged them, that has inspired them, Lord God, that has led them to want to arrest those negative thoughts and speak life into the will that you have for them, Lord God. Father God, I pray the blood of Jesus over each and every person over the sound of my voice. Anyone that's standing in need of healing, Lord God, whether it's physically or mentally, Lord God. Lord God, I pray for a resurrection of the spirit, Lord God, for those whose spirits have been feeling burden and heavy laden lord god i pray that you give their spirits some rest and i pray that you show up and show out in their lives lord god father god i just thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to the people to share what is on my heart lord god and i thank you for allowing every single thing to be led by you 
I thank you for not allowing this to be a scripted platform, but a platform of real talk, real life testimony, real life experience. And I thank you, Lord. And Father God, as we go about our day, Lord God, I pray that you guide us, direct us, place people that are a part of the kingdom in our pathway. Allow us to be mindful of the opinions and of the culture that's around us, Lord God, to let it not lead us into temptation. I pray that we recognize each and every test that you give us so we can pass the assignment to get to the next level. And I just thank you just for another day. It's in Jesus' mighty name that I pray. Amen. Okay, loves, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Let's Talk the Podcast. I hope it was something I said that has inspired you, encouraged you, and motivated you to keep pushing or start over or even begin that thing you have been doubting or putting off until next year. And before you go, make sure that you follow me on Instagram at let's talk underscore the podcast and life with Shakisha. And make sure you drop me some comments in the comments box and make sure you follow this podcast before you go. And again, I want to thank you for tuning in and don't forget to come back every other Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for another episode of Less Talk.